nestled 13 kilometers from the tea gardens of Palampur in Kangra Valley and surrounded by the Dholadhar range and the dense Shivalik forest is a tiny off-the-grid Himalayan village called Indreta, also popularly known as the Artist's Colony. This Italian-sounding village rose to prominence when an Irish theatre artist and writer Nora Richards came and settled here in the 1930s and taught the students of Punjab University the nuances of acting and drama. Here, she built herself a typical Kangra-style mud house called Chameli Nivas using local material like mud, bamboo and slate. The house is now open for visitors who want to come and see the place. Despite its remote location, Andretta soon began to attract artists from all over, especially Lahore, who came and settled here to pursue their creativity. From B.C. Sanyal, a well-known painter and sculptor, to Sardar Gurcharan Singh, the master potter who introduced studio art pottery in India, and Sobha Singh, the painter of Sikh gurus, came and lived in this beautiful village. A visit to Sobha Singh Art Gallery and Museum is a must-visit when in Andretta, here, you can also buy prints of some of his paintings. In Andretta, I was hosted by the Mirage, a beautiful house which was built in 1948 by one of Nora Richards' friends. Later, it was bought over by Dennis, who moved here from New Zealand and turned this land into a lovely home. The house is filled with exquisite Indian furniture and handicrafts collected over many, many years. This place offers a perfect setting for a peaceful getaway in the hills, whether you're traveling alone or with family. The rooms are super cozy, comfortable and very tastefully done up. Andretta's been around for a long time. No one actually seems to know where the name Andretta came from, which is odd. So you built this place from scratch or you well, got it from somebody else? No, no, I got the house from somebody else. Uh, it's an old house built in 1948, mm -hmm. right after partition. A whole bunch of people came here from Lahore. Mm -hmm. All the cultural sort of heart of Lahore moved here. Right. Uh, with a woman called Nora Richards. Right. And that included well, many, many people actually. So the theatre is still alive here, right? Well, like, not really. It's supposed to be. Once a year, the when she passed on, she left it to uh, the University of Punjab at Patiala, mm -hmm. who quite frankly um, do nothing with it. Uh, it's, it's a sad case of, I guess they don't have any money. They were supposed to produce a f play every year on Nora's birthday anniversary, um, which went on for a while, but that stopped and fizzled out for now. So there's very little in the way of any theatre. Right across Mirage is Andretta Pottery and Craft Society, which is quite active and thriving. It has short three months courses in pottery making, which attracts tourists from across the globe. The society was founded by Sardar Gurcharan Singh's son, Man Simran Singh and his wife, Mary, who moved here to carry forward the lineage of pottery. They still live in the village and manage Andretta Pottery. Shubham Sankhyan, a young potter and a son of their late friend, actively teaches pottery here. Shubham, yeah. um, I have no clue about pottery. I've never tried my hands at pottery at all, never before. Right. And but it seems very fascinating to me, and I really want to know like what brought you here and how did this whole thing start? Of course, I've read a lot about Andretta pottery and know the history a little bit, right. but I wanted to know from you. Yeah, so I've always been here, and uh, pottery is something which has always intrigued me in the sense that I've always seen people, you know, doing creative stuff around here, people from different parts of the world come here. So as it I think as my childhood it was pretty interesting considering living in you know, a very small village in the middle of nowhere. Yet the exposure was so extreme in the sense I was meeting the best of best artists of this country who would come here to visit. It's my interests have been into machines a lot as well. So I liked machines a lot. So I was doing aeronautical engineering and then I quit that. Yeah. Yeah. But tell me something, the, I'm sorry to cut you off, but like, uh, when you make pots, right. I've always thought of it like, 
you know using the machine to make a pot like a pot how do you come up with these figures and you know these pretty things all around like do you follow somebody specific or is it just in your head and you create it or i think you know what it is uh... saying anything is completely unique will be not a right statement because right. in the sense all the influences come from the things which react it's always a reaction from the other things we get whether it can be nature whether it can be another artist who is working so there's always some sort of a inspiration you get. just now i put this flag around this is a new shape and the new glaze which i have just done And uh, yeah, something, something like this. So this can be used as a. This can be used as for serving. Mm -hmm. You can just heat it. You can put it in a microwave oven, dishwasher, anything. And, uh, okay, yeah. I really <laughs> want to try to make something. <laughs> sure, why like not? Me. Why not? If you're here, you should definitely do it. Yeah, for sure. The untarnished landscape and the weather conditions in the region around Andretta is perfect for tea cultivation. So a visit to one of the many tea gardens here is a must. I visited a very beautiful and one of the biggest tea estates in the region called Wa Tea Estate. They are the only ones in the area to offer a nice guided tour of the tea estate which includes tea tasting as well. When I planned this whole uh, Palampur trip, I asked a couple of my friends like what I should do and where I should go. So everybody who's been to Palampur, they recommended this place, Wati Estate, and they wanted me to come here and experience the tea tour and the cafe and everything. So I really want to know, Surya, like how did this whole thing come up? And uh, this is your dad's, uh, yes, basically uh, baby, right? And then yeah. he's been the one who started it, right? Yeah. So and you've gotten into it now, and you're helping your father. Yeah. And you're full time into it. Full time into it now. So how old is this how old is this estate So the estate was originally established in 1857 uh it was established by the Britishers okay and they were here till 1905 mm-hmm. when there was a major earthquake okay. due to that earthquake they abandoned the area and they left okay. our estate was then taken over by a family from a place in Pakistan called Wa So the Nawab of Wa took over this property and that's how we get our name Wa Estate So you bought it off them They were here till 1947 Then partition happened, so they left for Pakistan, and so then it was abandoned. Basically. It was taken over by the government, and then we bought it in an auction. So that's how my family bought it. We bought it in 1953, and since then we've been running it. Uh, we never had any of these tourist-related activities with tea or anything, but uh, you know, tea is a tough business to be in. And when we realized that if people visit vineyards or they visit other manufacturing units, why not? we have them visit the tea estate right. and then taste what we do or you know kind of see what we do and people in india love tea so i'm sure they would want to know like yeah. how it's all done and how it's made right? so it is the highest consumed beverage after water right. so you know there was always the market was there it was just that we needed to create an experience out of it and you know we've been lucky that people have recommended it and it's worked out so how, how much of the land do you have like how big is this uh, so wa is spread over 526 acres so it's the largest plantation in the Marshall Bell. So then you must have like a lot of staff here. We've got a lot of people, but the biggest pro- problem uh, I think. Where do you where do you get these people from? They're from Himachal. So I would say a lot of them are from Himachal, yeah. but we've got a lot of people from Jharkhand as well. So they're all they migrate they migrated here. Um, sadly, in India there is a shortage of people. Agriculture is becoming tougher and tougher. But uh, we're moving into mechanization. Uh, personally, I feel machines are not. the best way to pluck leaf mm-hmm. because it's a selective uh, small we only plucking the two leaf in a bud so hand plucking is the best way to pluck so currently we're hand plucking but i don't know for how long we'll be able to sustain that so we're at it we're at it So overall Andretta is a small clean and a beautiful village which definitely takes you by a surprise. It doesn't actually feel like a village because people from across the world come here to enjoy the peaceful environment. The crowd is always a mix of international and local tourists from all walks of life. 
It is truly a paradise for artists where inspiration is always just around the corner. Be it through people, the scenery or the stillness that allows you to dream a little and slow down.